Hello, brother and sister Christ. I had a brother in Christ, and in one of the question and answers, he asked, Do you know about the pure Cambridge Bible issue? And if so, what do you think about it? Okay. Now, to get started on it, I haven't. I had to actually look into it when he did, and I just cut a brief view of it. And basically, there's people arguing over which King James Bible is God's pure, perfect written word of God, and some King James Bibles aren't God's perfect written word. So let's go through this real quick. I'm going to show you how it was shown to me by a brother in Christ. Okay. But first, uh, you have the Texas Receptus, which is the Antioch. I put Antioch up here. And then this is actually the New Testament in Greek by Wes Cotton Hoare. This is pre-Nestle's Elan. Um, but instead of wasting money on one, we're saying Nestle's Elan. Okay. That's the Alexandrian. Okay. The Texas Receptus is based by, backed by over 99% of all Greek extant manuscripts. The Nestle's Elan, less than 1%. All, any, all these Bibles, Bible perversions, and I put any Bible, if you can read that, any Bible, but that's for this diagram that we'll be talking about in just a second. But all the Bible perversions come from this. You say, what about the New King James? The New King James takes this, and this, and blend them together to get you away from this. Because it's not long that people go to a New King James if they get away from the Texas Receptive completely and get an NIV. I'm living proof. I started out as a false convert in these battle buildings with a New King James, and it didn't take long for them to get me over to an NIV. And I've talked to other brethren where it didn't take long for them to get them over to an NASB. You know, all these Bible perversions away from the New King James. The New King James isn't a New King James. It's just perverting the Word of God with this junk over here, trying to mix it with this, and to get people away from this. Okay. But I always talk about like the bar of gold. Remember the bar of gold? 99% gold, less than 1% gold. you got a debt to pay. Which one are you going to choose? Anybody that's not mentally ill is going to choose the 99% gold bar to pay their debts off. Okay, you want to know the real plan of salvation? You're only going to find it in the King James Bible. You want the true Word of God? You're only going to find it in the King James Bible for English-speaking people. 99% gold, less than 1%. But what does most of the world choose? Less than 1%. Why? They hate the truth. They hate the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. Who's that? The real Jesus Christ. They hate the true plan of salvation. Now, Let's get to this diagram real quick. Pull this off real quick. Okay. I put four boxes. You've got Antioch over here. What's the I was taught this. The Antiochian mentality is that there is a perfect written word of God out there. There's a perfect written word of God out there. And when you do the study and you do the research, you find out, boom, it's the King James Bible. That's the Antiochian mentality today. There is a perfect written word of God, and it's the King James Bible. The Alexandrian philosophy is that there is no perfect written word of God out there. So you can have any Bible. Any Bible you want. You get to choose what you want to believe in and what you want to follow and what best suits you. Okay? And I, this was, I'm going to bring it back to what the brother was asking. What do I think about it? Okay? These people saved. Okay? Not because... You have to believe the key. You have to be taught. I've taught this before, brothers and sisters of Christ. You can use a Bible perversion, any other Bible, and someone comes along and teaches you the plan of salvation out of the King James Bible. So I've seen people use an NIV, and they say, well, I teach that repentance is repenting of your sins. And I was like, where did you get that? You won't find it in all the other Bible perversions. You only find it here. They've done away with a lot of the words repentance in the Bible perversions. Okay? You're not going to find the real Jesus Christ. Someone had to preach the real Jesus Christ to them. Right? Get that. That's why I say this is when you find salvation, God's going to bring you into all truth. He's going to show you that there's, you're going to have the mentality when you get saved that there's a perfect written word of God out there. Whether you're using a Bible perversion and someone comes along and preaches the true plan of salvation, you believe it, you truly get saved, born again, now your attitude in your heart is there's a perfect written word of God out there. Where is it? God brings you to the King James Version. There's so many people out there with testimonies, including myself, where when God brought me to the truth, with His perfect written word, that's when I got saved. Okay. Now, Alexandrian philosophy, like I said, 
No perfect word, any Bible. Now here's the thing. When I mean by any Bible, I'm talking about all the other Bible perversions. Any Bible, Bible perversions. Okay? Sometimes I've come across one person in my life that has this attitude. If I could, I'd draw a line and then race, but my racing's not that good. But it's diagonal. They believe, I've come across somebody that believes that there's a perfect written word of God out there, but they believe it's the NIV. And when I show them mistakes in the NIV, they go back to the attitude of, well, maybe there's not any perfect Bible out there. But at first, perfect Bible, and they're using whatever Bible that was given to them, and that's the perfect Bible. These people, oftentimes, you can, you can reach for the truth and show them the truth. Talk to them about Texas Receptive. They always say it's closer, the NIV is closer to the Greek. What Greek are they talking about? They're talking about this junk over here, backed by less than 1% of all Greek stamp manuscripts. Tell them the truth of how they've been lied to. For some reason, I don't know why, but in my heart, I just, I had an, I, I just felt that there was a, the, I was always taught the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, singular, singular. Even though I had four or five Bible perversions, I was always taught the Bible. And somewhere in my heart, I was like, yeah, the Bible, there's got to be a perfect word out there. But I was using another Bible other than the King James Bible. I, I was in a condition that God could reach me. You see what I'm saying? He was in a condition where he reached a lot of us that way and took us from this attitude. Okay, now I do believe this perfect written word of God. I didn't know what it was. Now I know what it is. It's the King James Bible. The most dangerous people out there, which we're getting, when I look into this, where people are arguing over which King James Bible is the best, is you're getting this mentality. They prefer the King James Bible. Oh yeah, the King James Bible, it's the word of God. But their attitude is, is it's not perfect and it can be improved upon. And they want to correct it and correct it. And I've come across King James Bibles that I've had to throw out because mainly because of uh, artwork, satanic artwork, um, satanic symbols. Okay, I've had to throw them out. But my advice is, is uh, Alexander Scorby. I'll come a little bit closer. <laughs> Alexander Scorby. I have it downloaded on this MP3 player, and you can listen to it on devices. And what I do is, is when I get Bibles, these are two the main Bibles I get. Okay, and we're going to go. For, I'm going to explain why this is so important. I don't get Bibles with commentary in it. Okay, mainly because the bigger print. Because if you look at these, the bigger print. This is large print. It's just the King James Bible. This one, it has the uh, concordance in the back. If you want to look up some words, it doesn't have every word. And it's got some maps in the back. So this still has extra stuff besides the Bible. But when you go to large print, which is easier on my eyes, it does take up <laughs> a lot more space. So they take it out. But what I'm talking about is when you open this up, Bibles I like, there's no center column. There's no commentary on the bottom. It's just the Bible. What happens? I can go through here, and I am, and I'm highlighting stuff, and I can draw in pencil on the, on the sides and in the spaces. I can draw in reference. Okay, this verse here, put a reference verse that you can go over here, and it talks about the same thing. Or this is what it's talking about in more detail over here. I do that from what I learned from people like Brother Ruckman, Brother Brian, uh, Brother JT, uh, Brother Brad Avenshine, I can write stuff in, and then with your own studies you can do it. But the problem that we're having is, is people have taken the King James Bibles and they put all these notes in it and sell it with all these notes in it, and then over time what's probably happening, I'm not saying it is, but what's probably happening is those notes are finding their way into it and they're changing the scripture. Okay? It's best to stay away from that kind of stuff. But... Um, but this one, even though even if you don't do, want to do a large print Bible, I, they still have Bibles at the local church Bible publishers that don't have the margins, the stuff down the center. They don't have the stuff on the bottom. Okay, it's just the Word of God. And what I do is, is you sit there, when you get a new Bible, you sit there that you question, because I like buying used King James Bibles. I do. 
Um, I have whole case of them over there. Some of them are like so large print that they're three volumes King James Bibles, so they're bigger print than this one. Um, but what I do is, is uh, like my grandfather's. This one I haven't gone through completely, but we've been reading this with our um, uh, Scripture by the Pond, Memory Verses by the Pond. We read it together. I make sure to verify it with the uh, with the sixty. The King James Bibles that I use here with Alexander Scorby is reading the 1611, and we go through the verses. Okay, my advice is if you think something's wrong, get it Alexander Scorby. He's reading the 1611, and go through and say, okay, if they said uh, this dog or that dog, and they go back from this and that, uh, I mean, it's up to you. But for the most part, every Bible that I've gone through, following along with Alexander Scorby, it's right on that I, I use. Now, like I said, I've got tons that I've collected. I've went through some of them, but I haven't gone through all the King James Bibles I have. But my advice is, that's what I do, you know, because I like reading it and I like going through. So I'm sitting there with the Bible, with your Bible open, follow along with Alexander Scorby and read. But a lot of times, it's just comparing Scripture with Scripture. Okay, um, Second Peter, chapter one, verse nineteen. It says we. Have have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn. Remember, Jesus is the light of the world. Uh, Satan is darkness. If your father is Satan, the devil, you know, you're of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. Okay, he's in darkness. This world's in darkness. Jesus is the light, so it shineth in a dark place until the day dawn. And the day star arise in your heart. Okay, day star there. It's a reference to Jesus Christ. Okay. Verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Verse 20. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, by whole, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Okay. Jesus is the high, our high priest. Okay. If you want to say it like that. But right there, the main thing we're looking at is Daystar. Now, there was a, a big argument on um, KingJamesVideoMinistries.org where people were going back and forth and making it difficult because somebody had bought a Bible, King James Bible, that in the margins, um, right here, it talks about the Daystar being it's Jesus. Someone tried to imply that it could have been Satan or something. It's like, no, it's Jesus Christ. And why would you imply that it's Satan? Because when you turn to Isaiah 14, 12, turn to Isaiah 14, 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Remember that, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground, which just weakened the nations? Now in the comments section, he said he got a, a, like one of the original 1611 King James Bibles, and in the margin, where it's, it, had, it had a note there saying, under son of the morning, it had a note. You go to the margin, it says also morning star, or it could be said morning star. That's not correct. Why? Because only the sons of God are stars and the, and the angel of the Lord. In other words, only angels are stars. Jesus is the angel of the Lord. Okay, that's why he can be refer referenced as a star. But you go to... Um, Job 1.6 and Job 2.1. That's a great example when you turn to those scriptures and read it. We'll be reading it more in another study. Um, but it talks about how the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came. See, it does a distinction. And the lie out there is to deceive people. And I was deceived as a false convert. I always thought, Satan, he's a fallen angel. He's a fallen angel. So right there when it says, oh morning... Ah, uh, sun of the morning, it can be, or morning star. You know? But when you actually do the study, Satan, if you keep reading that whole chapter, Satan is a cherub, but he's still not a cherub anymore. He's a fallen cherub. He lost his status. What is he now? <laughs> Satan. Okay? He was a cherub. Now he's not. He's a fallen cherub. That would be proper to say, but he's not a fallen angel. He's not a star whatsoever. So you have that situation though where they're getting distracted by the thing, uh, what it says, it, or else it could be this, 
and they think they need to throw the Bible away. Well, no, you need to get ignore the stuff in between. I keep thinking of the name, but you have commentary on the bottom, but then you have, you have notes, like references, like the references in the center and the notes. Sometimes they can be good, sometimes they're going to be wrong. I'd rather put my own references in there. That's just me, brother and sister Christ. After going through what my first Bible had references galore, had the stuff in the bottom and everything, and it was like, it was as thick as the, it was a small print, and it was as thick as the big print <laughs> because of all that junk. Um, but the thing is, is when you do your own Bible studies and slowly put it in yourself, you do it with a pencil like that can be erased. Because I can make mistakes and go, okay, maybe I was wrong here, and I erase it. So when I do my references uh, or notes, I do it in pencil that can be erased. Um, but remember, that's just the best example I can give. So it's not that someone's altered the Bible. What it is is they try to put notes on the side, and they've been putting notes on the side of these Bibles, these King James Bibles, for so long that somehow, some of them, they can sneak some of that in there. You might come across the King James Bible that says uh, that they might have snuck in there, O Lucifer, son of the morning star. Uh, no, that's not supposed to be that. So you got to be careful. So, my best advice, Alexander Scorby reads the 1611, ignore the references. Okay, this whole thing, do you, what do you know about the pure Cambridge Bible issue? I would just stick with the King James Bible. This Bible right here, that I get from the church Bible publishers, and I'll put it in the link below where I got these Bibles. And like I said, verify them. By all means, verify them. I got old King James Bibles that I verify, and I go through. Even though I'm a King James Bible believer, Antioch, perfect written word of God, and that I found it's King James Bible. There's no telling what Satan will do to try to destroy the King James Bible. And then he's got counterfeits after counterfeits after counterfeits, but the ultimate counterfeit could be simply he starts messing with the King James Bible. Okay. I put that in there. Okay. Angel of the Lord to reference to Jesus in the Old Testament. Jesus is the day star that arises in our hearts. 2 Peter 1, 12, 19 is talking about Jesus Christ, day star. But the whole point is, is a, a, a brother in Christ was like, should I throw this Bible out because of the commentary? Okay, ignore the commentary. If it bugs you, which it would bug me, knowing that the commentary is wrong and the commentary is trying to promote Satanism, I just find get a Bible that has no commentary. No commentary Bible. So that would be my answer for this question, okay? Have I heard about it? Not that much. Like I said, I just, I love the Word of God. I'm studying the Word of God. I'm listening to some of the other brothers preach and teach. And I'm not really going out there surfing the web, looking at like millions of people, you know? Someone might reference, okay, what do you think of this guy? What do you think of that guy? But for the most part, you find two to three good Bible-believing, God-fearing men. That's all you got time to keep up with. You know, I don't have time to keep up with 50 ministries that are out there. Um, so, and between my own Bible studies and everything. So, people say, well, these people need to be called out. Some people might be called into it. I know Brother Brian calls people out. Brother JT there for a while was showing how some of these Bible perversions were coming out and deceiving, trying to deceive people. Um, there are some men in ministry that might get called to do that. Okay? I just love preaching the Word of God. So my advice to you, no commentary. References, like I said, I, you can have them if you want. I'm not saying it's bad to have references or commentary, but like I said, somewhere in the commentary, some of them are going to be wrong somewhere because the commentaries are based off of one man saying this is how it should be. Like if you have a Ruckman's Reference Bible and some of his commentary, he's wrong because you've got one man saying everything that it's supposed to be. Okay. The, the, the notes I make in here aren't 100% my notes, you know. They're a little bit from all the brethren, you know, when you guys even teach me things. Um, so, just stay away from them. And use, like I said, I used to use the Alexander Score. I used to sit there during the winter and I'd go through Bible, a few Bibles and say, okay, these Bibles are good. Okay, that Bible's good for the most part. You know, not going through the whole, whole thing. But my main two Bibles that I use here, they both line up because I've followed along and listened to Alexander Scorvey read from cover to cover. Okay. So, that is my answer to that question. So, hope you got some information here, okay? The most dangerous people, people who claim to be King James Bible believers, 
but in their heart they don't believe there's a perfect written word of God, so they keep trying to correct it and improve on it. They're the most dangerous. The people that we can reach today, more than anything, the false commerce that we can reach today, are the people that believe there's a perfect written word of God, but they're using a Bible perversion. They believe there's a perfect written word of God, but they've been deceived into believing it's the NIV, or the NASB, or something like that. And it doesn't take much to convince them it's the King James Bible. It doesn't take much to convince them at all. Right? What's almost impossible to convince is these professing, Bible-believing Christians that like to correct the King James Bible, that like to add to God's Word and subtract from God's Word, who think it can be improved upon. So, when you go to buy a King James Bible, the only thing I know is I know uh, Alexander Scorby reads the King James Bible, and you can follow along in this, in your Bible, and say, okay, is it really messed up, or is it not that messed up? My biggest thing is I, those memory verses. I started doing cue cards on those memory verses, and I got to the point where God's like, when I go to the used bookstore to look at King James Bibles, the first thing I do, because some of those old Bibles, it, it just says Holy Bible. If you get some of the old Bibles, they just say Holy Bible on them. And I'm flipping through them trying to figure out if they're a King James. So I had to get to the point where there would be like five to ten different verses I would look up. 2 Timothy 2.15 is one. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Does it say that? I've opened books where it doesn't say that. It, they leave out rightly dividing, and they leave out the word study in some of them. So I'm like, it doesn't tell me what version it is, but we know it's not a King James Bible, and I put it back on the shelf. So having a cue card of all these memory verses and in your back pocket to take if you're looking at used King James Bibles. That's something I also do. So um, that was just real quick. Remember, there's still people we can reach. There's got to be somebody still out there. I'll put this back to diagonally this way. There's still some people out there we can reach. The, we're still here, aren't we? There's still people we can lead to the truth, the King James Bible. You lead them to the truth, you can lead them to the true plan of salvation, you can lead them to the real Jesus Christ. But they've got to have this in their heart. Okay? I'm talking about false converts. They've got to have this in their heart. I was a false convert. And somewhere in my heart, I was like, when someone said there was a perfect written word of God, my heart leaped and said, there's a perfect written word of God out there? There has to be. And I started getting into the Bible version issue. And that's what saved me learning about the real Jesus Christ and the true plan of salvation that's only found in the King James Bible. You won't find it in this other junk over here. Right? Like I said, if people say, I got saved off a of Bible version. No, you did not. No, you did not. Someone had to come along and preach the true plan of salvation out of the King James Bible while you were using a Bible perversion. Because true biblical repentance is only found in the King James Bible. The changed life after salvation, only found in the King James Bible, the new creature in Christ Jesus. Okay? And it applies to a physical change in your life, as the Bible talks about it, Paul talks about it, right? in the scriptures. So be careful of these people. So if you have this whole debate thing going on, it's trying, you know, I don't care about debates. In fact, I'm not for debating. I, I believe the Bible's against debating. Okay, it's not profitable. Okay, and it lists all these things, and most of those things are sins that the Bible lists as sins, and then it uses the word debate among them, and it's like, what do we say? Comparing Scripture to Scripture. If it's listing all these sins and saying it's not profitable, then debate is a sin. Okay? I'm not talking about it. Don't get into a debate. If someone says, that King James Bible you have is not perfect, grab your Alexander Scorvey, start listening, follow along, if it's the Bible you've been doing study after study after study in it, I haven't found any errors in this Bible. There's things I don't understand. But when someone says there's an error, like, um, was it Brother Brian did a long time ago, Peter Ruckman did, and some other men did, where they've answered all the questions. All the attacks on the King James Bible have been answered. Okay? But the big question that was asked was, could someone be altering the King James Bibles? You've got to be careful where you get your Bible from. And like I said, I'll link the local Bible church publisher that I get my Bibles from, the ones that I will also order Bibles for people, and that offer is still out there, Brother Sister Christ. If you need a Bible and you want a Bible, let me know. I've, I've mailed Bibles to them. Just to random people, I won't be mailing a nice Bible like this. 
to just anybody that just randomly comes up and says, I want a King James Bible. They have a nice King James Bible that's not super small print, but it's paperback. Uh, or hard, it's a hardback, but it's like cardboard. And I can send that to you. And it's a good Bible to get started on and get really into it. I've bought really nice Bibles for some brethren that I know are saved and that really love the Word of God. But I'm just saying, at this ministry, I'm all for sending Bibles to people. Okay? And that's, but I'll link the church Bible publisher. No commentary, no references, just the Word of God. And you write in your own references. Okay? So, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.